Good morning, fellow billionaires. This is Silver5150 with your weekly wrap-up for Saturday, July 10th, 2021. As you can see here, I plan to share an unboxing with you soon. I have taken the liberty of going through and removing the tags and all that stuff, and but I haven't been in it. And I've got a proper knife today to cut this sucker open so I don't have to hear any comments about you guys complaining about <laughs> the knives I use. You guys, are, you guys are sticklers about that. It's like, use the proper knife. And I'm sitting there going, well, I never went to the emergency room for, like, a knife wound yet. You know, even though I was in the military. But anyway, okay. I understand. I appreciate your concern. So I'm trying to do better. Better. Okay. All right. Um, so real quick, um, this here is the 2021 Gibraltar uh, Silver Barbary Mark Gay uh, coin. It's a monkey. Okay. It's, it's a Marcel monkey <laughs> coin. And I adore them. And they're gorgeous. And when um, Anthony G told me about them, on my uh, email, you know, he's one of the subscribers, Anthony G, thank you for that. You know, of course, I went through and I started checking them out and everything like that. Turns out they were 40 bucks a piece, um, probably about a month ago. At the time when I think spot price was eh, around 20, 25, 26. And so that's quite a hefty premium. But, you know, when you look at the mintage and all that stuff, it uh, it turns out that I thought they were a pretty good buy. I think mintage was 15,000. And then, of course, um, you know, they have a very nice design. This, this, this here, the, what you're looking at here, it doesn't really do the, the coin justice. It's absolutely gorgeous. It really is. Okay. And I think they're proof. They say they're proof like or PU. Okay. That's all fine and good. All right. But a little story behind that. So I did order some for me and the broker and the Silver Joker when I found them. And I just said, hey, you know, um, let me know if you want them. If you don't want them, I'll keep them. So I ordered a total of 52, two for the broker because he's a bigger gold guy. The broker loves gold more um, than, you know, say me and Silver Joker. So he's got a lot of that. But he did want a couple of these Marcells because he's partial to monkey coins. He has some really nice uh, Perth Lunar uh, monkey coins. Okay, so I'm going to go into the unboxing. Now, this unboxing here is not from the original order. This was actually ones that I returned to Atmex. Let's see if we can get this open without making a mess. To Atmex because they had cracked, um, they had cracked, uh, capsules okay so these capsules here when i got the order my there was nine total that had like bad splits in the capsules and it could have been from shipping it could have been from anything else i wasn't going to be too much of a stickler about it but these capsules are heavy duty man and you know i have capsules here at home but they're nothing like the ones that come from the mint oh my goodness they're super heavy duty so i contacted atmex about it and you know they have their procedure where they'll send you you know you show them pictures or you show them evidence maybe maybe not but anyway, they'll send you a shipping label where you can go ahead and um, pack everything together that's, you know, that you want to exchange. According to their rules, they set everything up. And let's make sure we get this right here. So we're just going to go with that. And um, you can ship that stuff back to them and they'll send you the regular stuff, you know, at that leisure. Now, they were actually pretty prompt about this. So I got to give Atmex props because we always, you know, give them a hard time about being the high price leader. But they actually do really well um, when it comes to things like this. Returns. One time they gave me a free capsule for my 10-ounce uh, Somali elephant that I wrecked completely. And so here we are. So these are the new nine. The new nine um, Marques, I call them. All right, from the Barbary, from the Barbary uh, Mint or Gibraltar Mint. Okay. Well, from Gibraltar, not the Mint. This is actually, I'm trying to think here. I'm pretty sure this is, is Tuluvian or maybe the Royal Australian Mint. I think Royal Australian Mint. I should do my research. Nope. Too busy talking about other stuff. Okay. So, um, as you can see, they're all in good shape. And this one here came in a bag because it wasn't part of the group. And that looks like an aftermarket capsule. So, I guess I'll just have to let them slide on that. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Abmax, I just praised you and look what happened. Anyway, all right, all right, we're gonna let go, we're gonna let go. Okay, so total monkeys all together for me is 25. Let's see if we can get these over here like this. I got 25 of those bad boys. Okay, move them up a little bit. Oh. And so there we have it. And so I have my 25 now. Um, that capsule there, I actually think I have one of these. I'm gonna go ahead and replace it because the uniformity is very important to me. All right, so that's our silver for today, all right? But I want you to notice something. Now, remember, I said I paid $40 for each of these coins back, you know, um, when spot price was $25.26, right? Get ready for this. Atmex is the only one, the only ones I found with these on the primary market when they came out. And, of course, they're out of stock. And I think they'll stay out of stock for some time. Well, let's take a look here and see if we can find a little information about them, okay? 
get our get our story straight here. So I'm sorry. So not fifteen thousand, but fifty thousand coins worldwide were minted, and I think they're already gone. You can get them on the secondary market, eBay, something like that. But I think you're gonna play a premium over forty bucks. Um, let's see. And so they were minted here. Well, officially proved by the Gibraltar National Mint. Okay, in Buckingham Palace. So it's from their mint. All right, good stuff. Now let's take a look at the silver market. Let's take a look at the silver market. All right, here on Barron's Data Market Center, we've got silver pulled up. It's just their little mini chart and stuff. As you can see, silver did pretty good. Um, on Friday, you know, they had, uh, it was about 20, 20 cents up. We closed the week, you know, just around 26.18. Okay, but you see this chart pattern right here. You know, we were up just, you know, last month. Last month, early last month, we were up, you know, another $2, you know, if I'm not mistaken. All right, another $2, and, you know, I guess the powers that be didn't like that. Powers that be, you're going to drive me to second. I didn't like that because um, they went ahead and they initiated a smackdown here at the beginning of the month, you know, to kind of suck the wind out of everybody's sales. But I'm going to tell you something. If you look at the range here in, like, I don't know, say the last, you know, uh, I'm going to say last two to three weeks, the range has been pretty, pretty steady. Okay, so from June 17th until now, uh, you know, it's about three weeks, we've been between this 2582 and 2626 range. And I'm going to tell you something. What I've learned about this type of activity, talking about right here, is um, those in charge of the numbers in the markets, talking about the central banks and the governments and stuff, they found that in order to stem the tide of the um, silver squeeze. You know, they want to stop those silver rates out there from, you know, accumulating all the silver and, and stacking and, and, and squeezing all the silver. You can't let markets move in any direction, uh, especially with silver. They can't move down because they move down too radically. You're going to have people trying to stack more. I mean, more. But if you have them move up too far, like past that magical $30 mark, then of course it gets all kinds of attention and that tension draws new buyers. And so there's more purchase. There's more being stacked and squeezed. So they found that a, that a position of inaction is what's most effective at slowing down the draw on the silver inventories in the uh, money metals market. So, um, you know, when it comes to the industrials, the industrials are going to do what they do. They go to the mines directly or they go to refineries directly. And if they have to go to the retail market, you know, they do it, you know, in secret and they do volume. OK, but for the most part, guys like us, folks like us, we look at the spot price to determine what our next move is going to be. And in all honesty, we know what to do when the price goes down. We know what to do when the price goes up. But when the price just sits kind of stagnant, it creates uncertainty. And they know that's what slows down the movement of physical silver out of the inventories the most. And so that's the policy they have chosen. That's the stance they've chosen. And how do they do it? Well, it's kind of tricky. Let's look here at the dollar. Now, on the dollar index on Barron's, is a little bit of a different chart, all right? But if you look down here in May, we started, well, actually starting in April, we started really dipping down, you know, with the dollar here in this last um, cycle, you know, talking about uh, you had 94, you know, on the dollar index, and we got down as low as 89 and change, all right? And at that point, that was right around the time that, you know, silver should have been going back to that 30 handle. Because remember, when we got to 30 the first time, we were actually somewhere back here in, you know, the 1st of February, and the dollar was down, you know, to around 90, Okay. So the dollar shoots up to 94 almost and then dips down to 89. And during that time, now look at that, look at that. That's June, late June, it's, we were 25, 26. So even though there's supposed to be um, a correlation between the dollar and silver because silver's price in dollars, they have somehow figured out a way to either use the circuit breaker system, and I'll tell you about that later, or they figured out a way to disconnect silver from currency movement. And so it can't, it can't, gain value it can't benefit from a downward pressure on currencies all right on the dollar in particular because if you look over here say at bonds all right so the 10-year treasury is my favorite i like to look at the 10-year treasury that's my favorite right there this here is a three-month chart all right you can see that as early as um you know uh the end of may well may may 13th it says here um we were at 1.7 you know on the 10-year note all right in the 10-year note, the higher the note level is, the stronger the dollar is, and it benefits the dollar, which is bad for silver. So, of course, around May, you know, I can imagine that we were somewhere between that range, you know, 25 and 29. Um, I don't think we got anywhere near 29. But my point is, is that 
if that was to go down and the dollar was to go down as a result, then silver should go up. But no, even though the yields went down, even though the dollar went down, all right, and it's coming back up and it's going down now, it, silver did not benefit from that at all. And, I, and gold too, by extension, all right? But what that's telling me is that they have a way to disconnect precious metals from bond and dollar movement when it's convenient for them, all right? Meaning that, you know, those items are going down, those instruments, which is their product, by the way, is going down and that precious metals should go up. So they completely disconnect the price structure of precious metals from the dollar in the bond when it's in trouble. And then when the bond starts to look strong and it takes the dollar with it, then lo and behold, precious metals are reconnected to those markets and they start plummeting or they stay stagnant. And this is the game they're playing. Guys, when we talk about manipulation, you have no idea how desperate this thing has become for them. It is completely desperate, desperate to the point. And I guess silver being the linchpin to the financial system, why is that? Because according to a lot of the experts out there, it has the largest naked short position against it, meaning that there's probably, you know, 2,000 paper ounces to every single ounce, which makes you think, you know, the the the, um, the debt chart, the debt uh, clock is probably not that far off. In fact, it's probably conservative compared to what the price of silver really should be. You know, I'm a super bull, so I say this stuff. But the thing is, the math just doesn't lie. It's really hard for somebody that's mathematically minded to look at silver 41 years ago, see that it got to a spike high with the rest of commodities spiking high to $50 an ounce. And here 41 years later, when we know there's more money printed, we know there's more everything, that silver is half that price right now. Mathematically, it just makes you want to swallow your own head. It's hard to accept. This is something that really irks the crap out of us because we know it needs to start to revalue itself or it needs to start to reach fair value at some point. And what does that look like? It could be $37, it could be $70, it could be anything. We don't even know. It could be $1,700. But as long as you've got a willing um, uh, leadership structure that will do anything. Guys, I think they even go as far as to post, just have like somebody there posting bogus numbers throughout the day for the price of silver. Just type them in and, and you know hitting enter. And that's, that's what they say the number is, even though it has nothing to do with market activity or inventories, available inventories and whatnot. They use the paper contracts to do that. Okay, not going to get on my soapbox and rant, but I'm telling you, it's very, very frustrating to watch this stuff happen mathematically. All right, we'll, we'll just kind of, you know, continue to watch that. I think, I think we're hitting a wall, though. I think they're hitting a wall to where they can only fake, fake it with the amount of physical there is, the draw that's being done on physical from the industrial side and from the investor side. And at some point, that just kind of goes poof, and all that's left is them trying to jumble paper around, lie about the numbers, you know, move numbers from spreadsheet to spreadsheet to say there's silver when there's not. We go in, by the time Joe Schmo gets the last ounce of silver, it's $650, and there is no mas. Okay, we're at unobtainium, all right? You guys see it in the premiums right now. We're reaching unobtainium status. The premiums are going to continue to go up. And when we have a spot price is $26, but you have an eagle is $45, or possibly in the future, $100 or $200, you're going to sit there and you're going to be so pissed off because you're like, I don't want to pay that much over spot. Somebody's full of crap. Well, guys, I'm telling you, it's the spot price is full of crap. I can tell you right now with what it takes to make an American Silver Eagle, which is not the, you know, for a lot of people, it's the best coin. But my point is it's the Hallmark coin. It probably costs about $30 to produce, if not $40. Okay, we just don't know now because we don't know what the energy situation is. We don't know what the labor situation is. And we don't know what the availability situation is. We do with the Eagles, but we don't know what the future availability is. You know, how many plant jets and all that stuff. All right, trying to get this all in. But I just kind of, I want you guys to understand that there is games on top of games on top of games being played with the price of silver and gold and platinum. You know, and to some extent, palladium, palladium kind of broke out a while back. And so it's, it's held that higher valuation. But all the metals should have done that. All the metals should have done a rhodium and a palladium by now. All right. Now, here's the thing that I find very fascinating about all this. Now, let me see if I can get to this without making a mess. Um, let's go to copper. And copper I hadn't bought up earlier, but I'm going to go ahead and bring up copper. Because as you can see, copper has made some really good moves um, just in the last couple of months. You know, copper it got over that $4 mark. It broke its all-time high here in the middle of May and um, all-time high. And I'm talking about including the 80, 1980 spike high, Okay. All right, it broke those all-time highs and stuff, and it's dribbled off a little bit, but it's still above $4 a pound, all right? But is it possible with the manipulation of silver going on that at some point we're going to see copper outperform, you know, silver uh, price to price, ounce for ounce? 
I mean, honestly, I you know when when I think about it, it's like, look, they're gonna either have to have to either smash down copper, you know, to almost nothing in order to keep the the illusion going. In which case, you know, the Chinese and everybody that needs to do infrastructure are gonna buy it all up, and there won't even be enough copper. Copper will be in a huge shortage, much more than it is now. Or they're going to have to somehow um, declare that silver is a base metal and it simply doesn't have any worth. And that's why copper surpassing it, you know, ounce to ounce per price. It's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous you know, on its face. So, you know, I, I, I guess I challenge those out there that are running this, this charade, you know, um, either declare that uh, copper is going to be a precious metal at some point, you know, given the progress it's making compared to silver, or silver is going to become a base metal, given how far away it is from all of its other royal brothers, all of its other precious metal brothers, and how close it is to copper. I mean, look, you're going to have to make a stand. You know, at some point, you're going to have to back up your uh, your activity and uh, try to bring some rationality to it, because on all honesty, there's no way in the world you can convince me that silver is supposed to be the slow in price. And the spot price is designed to create discourse in our community, because we think that we're overpaying for an ounce of silver when the spot price is 26 and premiums are 15, 16, 20 dollars. And I'm telling you, the real price of silver is much closer to the premium price you find for anything than it is to the spot price. Spot price is rooted in paper and derivatives, just like the song says. If you haven't checked it out, look at my last video. I try to explain it as quickly as I can in that song, but I'm telling you, it is a paper game that is designed to keep us from wanting to believe in silver as money. And trust me. I just, you know, look, I'm not trying to predict anything bad, but if you continue to devalue, diminish, and make God's money into an ugly thing, I think he's going to come down on you like a ton of bricks. I don't know. I don't know the mind of the Lord, but I'm just saying, okay? All right. Moving right along after all of that preachifying and speechifying, we want to talk about what? The very asset we were in just now, copper. Okay, now, here we have on Atmex, um, Dot com. We have the standard, you know, uh, one ounce copper round. This is random design. You can get anything, you know, out of this, you know, these copper rounds. But they do have them for as low as, as low as three eighty nine per round. No big deal, right? <laughs> as low as, except for one thing. Me and the broker used to chase these things down when you could get them at a cash price for eighty three cents. I think seventy nine cents. Sometimes they were on for sale. And guys, we're talking two years ago. So in two years. Just based on Atmex's price schedule, and I'm not saying, you know, because they're the high, high price leader, it's just they always have inventory. So you can use their inventory as a reference. Atmex had these very same rounds for $3 less or more than they have them right now, um, you know, two years ago. And it's because they can see the, they, at, look, dude, Atmex, they got their stuff together. They have resources. They have, you know, um, research. And all that stuff, they know what the demand is, they know what supply is, they know what the value of something is, and they're not afraid to reach that price schedule first. And that's all this is. Because, you know, even though you're, you're like, that's kind of high, it, you know, it is, it's kind of high, but it's Atmex, and so you're going to pay for that convenience, you know, just like you would, say, someplace that had everything you wanted. But at the same time, Atmex has these rounds for three eighty nine, and they were just $0.89 cents a few years ago. Well, now you've got um, these copper bars. At Money Metals Exchange. And these copper bars right now, you guys can't see that, but that's $1.59, okay? $1.59 if you buy 1000 Now, at max, I think you only have to buy 500 to get the 389 price, and if you buy 1000 it's still 389 uh, But you can get a one-ounce copper bar from Money Metals Exchange for about half that, all right? So here's what I'm saying to you. If you're frustrated by what you're seeing in silver, okay, and the price of silver you know, being manipulated and stuff. And as a result, we're not seeing the true price discovery getting the value out of silver that we're wanting to get, all right? What I would submit to you is that there are other plays you can make and still stay within budget. Now, I know a lot of you guys in the precious metals and the silver and stuff, you kind of like turn your nose up at copper. Um, you don't want to be bothered with it. It's very heavy. It is, but guys, is copper heavy if it goes to $10 an ounce and you bought it for, you know, $1.79? Is copper still heavy if it goes to $20 an ounce? These things are very much a possibility given the inflation that we're seeing coming into the system. All right? So just keep that in mind. You know, um, if you're tired of paying, you know, $15 over spot per ounce of silver, um, don't do the spot price on copper because it's done by the pound. But just understand that every time they make one of these bars, they have to strike them 
you know, and they have to mint them and, and refine them and all that stuff. And then, you know, they send them out and stuff. So it's going to be more than the spot price of copper. Actually, the strike and the refinement is probably more than the actual spot price of the ounce of copper itself. Just keep that in mind. But if you know that right now Atmex has these, and I'm probably going to get in trouble <laughs> for, you know, three eighty nine, and you prefer rounds, you'll pay that premium because who knows what you're going to get? You get something really nice, right? Um, but the future, this is the future price of, say, these bars that are half the price right now. Why wouldn't you go ahead, if you had the budget and the desire to do so, move into these bars right here, all right, and just sit on them and wait. And I can tell you right now, they look very nice when you put them in a capsule. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right there, okay? So there's one in a capsule, okay? And I've had these on my show before. But I can tell you, they, they can uh, actually have quite an appeal to them, right? And I plan on, you know, I bought these at a lower price point than that right there. But I plan on, you know, I plan on letting some go when we get to, you know, get comfortably, you know, past this right here, meaning everybody's got at least this price point or higher. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find a way to, you know, maybe, you know, sell some to people who want them. I'm not going to try to push them or, you know, uh, pump them or anything like that. But I can tell you, copper will surprise you in that if you buy something premium like this, and this is Kyozotl, the dragon from the World of Dragons from the Providence series, all right? Let's see if we can get that in focus. Come on. Yeah. Very, very, very nice copper round, all right? And I paid 99 cents for this back two and, about two and a half years ago, all right? And now, if you want one, I think you can get them at uh, Jim's Pro Shop on Amazon for about 15, 16 bucks. All right, and it's because they have a collectability side to them too. But I can tell you right now, all of these different ones, they're going to, you know, they're going to do very well here down the road. You know, 99 cents now, $1.79 uh, right now, turns into $10 in two or three years. You know, that's not a bad return on investment. Now, am I invested in copper? You bet your sweet bippy. Let's take a look. This is one of my little boxes of capsules, capsulized rounds and bars that I have here. Some of these I got from the broker. I traded gold for copper, believe it or not. And I can tell you right now, when I traded the gold, the performance of gold since the time I traded with the broker has not um, outshined or outperformed this copper in here. All right, Even if I've sold it, sold it at half the price of, say, our favorite uh, big juggernaut retailer. But, you know, I'm saying it has a place in your stack because it has commodity, of course, as a commodity. But it has, I'm sorry, return, potential for returns. It really does. It really does because it's minted and it's minted and it is an individual unit and you know human beings are creatures of unit and so complete units and so this actually has a lot of potential. Like I said, I got some premium ones in here, Kizotl, you know, got the standard, you know, Morgans in here, all right? I don't think I have any Buffaloes. I might have to fix that. But then, you know, I've got some that are in like theme coins, you know, the ones that make fun of Bitcoin. Let's see if we can get that right there, okay? And so, you know, this is part of my copper stack. And these are the things I have in capsules right now. They're available for quick sale um, here probably in about a year. I'll start releasing them um, to anybody that wants them. Now, is this all the copper I have? No, it's not. Because over in this monster box, I've got roll on top of roll on top of roll on top of roll of Egyptian dragons and Satan Gardens design, Bitcoin design, Aztec, um, Aztec rounds. You know, I wonder if I can get any of those out of here. Um, while we still got time, let's see if I can pull, because I haven't even taken a look at these. But yeah, so the old Aztec rounds, let's see if we can pull those out. Oh no, these are the standard, standard Eagle Aztecs. They're not the, I thought they were going to be like the, uh, the Aztec uh, calendar ones. They're not. Okay. I wasn't that prescient. I should have done that. But in any case, I got some of the silver ones. Um, as you guys know. But anyway, so my point is, and even like these quarter ounce ones, which are pretty cool, and I can't get that open right now. Um, they're all going to have their place in your stack. They're all going to have their place in your stack. So I urge you guys, you can get frustrated about, you know, the price of silver, right? And you can sit on the sidelines and miss out on certain opportunities. But the thing is, there are more opportunities out there. And I'm not trying to pitch copper against silver. I'm just saying, if they're going to be so ridiculous with the manipulation of the silver price, and allow copper to run, then get in on the copper train and use it to get on the silver train later on if copper gets to where it's going first because they hate silver so much. They, the powers of big. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for the day. Um, I'll show you these gators right here. Um, got a roll of those. But as you can see, silver, uh, you know, copper has its place um, in a stack. 
if you're not wanting to spend the money on gold and you're not wanting to stop stacking all together and, and silver has you too irritated, right? So those are options to you. I'm Silver5150 telling you guys that your stack is not whack and that just 20 ounces of silver to your name keeps you 99% ahead of the game. If you want to go long on copper, feel free, but I recommend you do it with Money Metals Exchange because I think right now they probably have the best deal on copper and possibly Golden Statement. So just uh, keep those in mind. Take a look at it. Just take a look at copper and see what you think. I think you'll be surprised. And I think you will, um, you'll rethink your strategy and figure out a way to stay in the game and uh, prepare yourself for all the inflation that's coming in all commodities. That includes energy. Look at oil right now. It's getting crazy. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great weekend. Um, get out and get some weather. Get some vitamin D from the sun. Protect yourself. And we will see you next time. Take care.